Our next guest is distinguished as the owner of the largest record collection in the world and has interviewed hundreds of celebrities on the air. I'd like you to meet a celebrated broadcaster, Jack Cullum. <laughs> Well, sir, you and Yvonne know each other, don't you? Well, don't blab this around. I knew her when her name was Peggy Middleton. Who? Peggy, do you know this man? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Did you meet before the show? I think we went to school I, together. I've interviewed her in the last couple of years a few times when she appeared here at Izzy Supper Club in town. I knew her at King Edward when she was in my own music school. <laughs> and uh, I was the only boy in an entire class of girls. That was a delightful idea. Lucky. I never learned a damn thing when I met her. <laughs> she, as a matter of fact, she won't remember, but she hated me because they had a record player in that room and I would play Fats Waller records during the noon hour and you wanted to play all that classical jazz. Oh. It's true. It's true. Oh. But she wanted to be an opera singer. She was very serious about singing, but you ask her. What? Yeah, well, she's serious about singing. Oh, I sang in the church choir at St. Paul's Anglican. She made phonograph records. Right? Oh, what is this? Sings, orchestra conducted by John Tommy. She was nine months pregnant when she made the record. Shh, don't tell those. You didn't sound nine months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> she was 12 months pregnant, yes. <laughs> when did you make this? Heavens. It's about 10 years 19 ago. years ago. 19 years ago. Did you play this on your show, Jack? Well, under duress, yes. Yeah. Is this your record? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, I kid you. Yeah. We have a thing called forced Canadian content. I don't know if Yvonne is still Canadian or not. But sure she is. Good, but I ch check her through as 30% Canadian content, and that's where we use that out. Were you too involved uh, in the entertainment aspect of things when you were going to school together? Yvonne was. I wasn't. I ran the public address system at uh, King Edward High School in Vancouver. Yvonne, oh, the legs on that woman. She used to send me up the walls during those new, we used to call them noon hour prep meetings, and she'd up there doing a Ruby Key to her T for two number. Oh, Just yeah, the right. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. I can still do that. Go ahead. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Just, are you, are you a little, a little touch of Ruby feeling for us here? What for? Oh, whistle, you got that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mel says he'll sing. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Get together on it. Okay. Let him do it. Okay, you do it. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> this moment. And. Wow. What's so that? that's what you did at school. What's huh? that for? <laughs> what is this for? Yeah. I never thought about it. Before. Good. I said no smoking, so. I guess uh, I, I I know, you can smoke it. if you like. Thank you. I, I appreciate did. that very much. How long have you been in broadcast? Too long. 30 years. That's a long time. Yes, it is. I paid my dues. Have you ever been fired from a job? Because you seem like a very outgoing, aggressive, uh, uh, hard line. Uh, yeah, I was do fired. Do my way or we're not going to do it. I was kind fired of only once in my life. They found a case of beer in the studio at 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, that was CKMO in 1946. But it was the only time. I've been threatened all through the years. But no. <laughs> Don't get me out. Don't. Yeah, I'm in text bad boy of radio. I admit it. What do you play on your show? Name it. It's a ballpark. Anything. Vintage, Anything. current. Uh, How, I got a song I bet you never played. Try me. Okay. And it's been recorded too. Sir. Are you ready? Yes. It's called Mouth to Mouth Resuscitation. I get no calls for it. <laughs> uh, uh, you want to practice? You got good help here. <laughs> <laughs> you familiar with that song? No, I'm not. No. See, I knew that. I knew Jack. They told me you had the biggest record collection. You put your matches on top of my notes. <laughs> <laughs> you read, you son of a gun. Good. <laughs> How do you go about getting all those terrific interviews with celebrities? Well, I started in 1946 doing show business interviews, and uh, one begets another. For instance, if you do Bane and you handle him with a degree of dignity, he'll give you a stairs number, and it goes down the chain. One begets another? One begets another, exactly. Mel has the same situation with his limousine bolts. I was listening to that <laughs> downstairs. Yeah, delightful. 
No, but that's the way it happens. And I go to Vegas three times a year and do a lot of my homework down there. And Vancouver is a very good entertainment town. We have uh, the Cave Supper Club here. Not as healthy as it used to be, but Mitzi Gaynor always does a break. A lot of Las Vegas acts break in in Vancouver, in case you didn't know. And uh, they're quite accessible in your own, own hometown. And there's not too many holdouts. I'm praying to God that this Saturday, when Mr. Sinatra appears in town, I've already had a turn down from his office, but I shall be out there with the tape machine, and uh, we will give it our best lick. You seem to always manage to get all the little nuances and all the the uh, the stuff about celebrities that most people never know. How do you find that out? A stupid brain that remembers anything. I think that a guy that has a garage knows every tool for every job uh, for a car. And the tools of my trade is a memory and a library. And the two of us, the three of us, work very well together. And a case of beer? No, I've switched now. I've gone to serious stuff now. <laughs> I'm so glad. I, I, only my nose knows for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who are some of the celebrities you've worked with over the years that you really enjoy? I loved Hope, a delightful man. Um, I did Jolson once. Alice Faye is one of my pets. Jack Benny, a darling man. George Burns. There's not too many. I, I think I only have what I call a few holdouts. Mr. Sinatra's one. Dean Martin, I almost got to do. I was backstage. It is the first time in my life that anybody ever drew a gun on me. I was backstage with my wife in Las Vegas, and it was all lined up. The security guards, everything was straight ahead. And uh, I just happened to look around the side of the curtain, waiting for him to come off stage. And suddenly somebody says, sir, would you take three steps backwards? I turned around. Here's a guy with a gun pulled on me. I said, to hell with you, Mr. Martin. I don't need you, and I got right out. That interview you won't need. Do you have, besides this vast record collection of yours, do you have a family lurking in the background, too? I am a twice-married man. I have a, two daughters living in San Jose by my first wife, Joy, who was a broadcaster, who actually, in a way, kind of fostered me into the trade. She was a receptionist. She made 75 I made $65 a month. I knew it very well. Joy and I were divorced to... Well, after five years of marriage, I married a girl named Alma from England, and uh, that has sustained this very day. And I have two sons by this marriage. Are they all into music? Rock kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, one's, yeah, one is going to be a rock guitarist. Oh, God, it's horrible. The, 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 the whole building at home shakes every day when he warms up his Fender bass. And the other one is just car happy. Uh, they both have uh, record collections. They both have record players, and uh, it's bedlam. You have teenage sons, you know what I mean, Sure hell. Your show is, is heard locally, right? In English, yes. Okay, if I gave you the opportunity <laughs> right now of saying whatever you wanted to say to a national audience, what would it be? Good evening, my name is Jack Cullen. I'm here for the next four hours to make an utter and complete fool of myself. I play gramophone <laughs> records, I play soundtracks, I have interviews, and we have show talk at 9.30 when we, you interview me, as a matter of fact, or I answer any questions that you want on any, any phase of show business. At 11.05, we head into something we call Network Replay, when we take you back to the shadow of the early days of radio, Inner Sanctum, Lux Radio Theater, and all that jazz. Play the record. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play the record and come back in a moment. <laughs> Where were you? At Hudson Hope, PC. Hudson Hope, PC. How did you know your mother wrote and said, Kareen, you do yoga. Yes. <laughs> and you always listen to your mother. My mother is a very, very bright lady. I did it to all the feminists in our audience by saying, I used to get up and I would do Perspired. Have your legs ever perspired? Ever? But Has I anybody... don't perspire. 